Welcome to the Motor Mouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we do full-length car reviews each and every week. And halfway through, we stop for a segment called Questions, Coffee, and Cars. And now we spun it off. We're on episode 33. I know. <laughs> How do you play along? Follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time, I put a post out with us holding our coffees. Get your questions in. It's only up for a short time. Once we have our questions, we start the show. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Got a special guest riding along today. Mm -hmm. Who's that? My cold. Oh, Apologize I know. if I sound a little stuffy. After we got back from Texas, Zach yep. got sick. All right, here we go. Your questions from Instagram. Any clue about the time when the new Toyota Land Cruiser will be here in our market? You guys are great. And please keep up the great content and work. Thank you. Well, we were in Texas with Lexus, mm -hmm. which is also Toyota, and mm -hmm. we asked, when are we getting a chance to drive the Land Cruiser? And they said in the new year. Mm -hmm. That's how we got in the new year. But we are looking forward to it. Um, so let's just say sometime in the new year, we've got the Tacoma coming up first. Hi, Andrea and Zach. I love the channel. I was hoping to get some practical advice from you guys. You've come to the right place. I <laughs> own a Genesis GV70 and have been having bad luck with it. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's been in the shop a few times for rear differential issues with only nine months of ownership. I have to drive it about three hours both ways to get it serviced at the dealer. I love everything about the car, but part of me wants to replace it with something more reliable, fuel efficient, and something I can get serviced locally. I'm currently looking at a RAV4 or CRV hybrid. Any thoughts? Well, that's, you know, a, that's a real come down from a Genesis, I tell you, to be driving either of those two. The, yeah. the only thing I would say is like, don't abandon the car right away. Mm -hmm. Like work with them. I understand the long commute if you, if you have to have it serviced, but, but the, but the problem with the rear differential, I would leave it with them mm -hmm. and get a courtesy car mm -hmm. and then say, call me when it's fixed. Because sometimes I say to people work, I had, a, I had somebody speaking, um, uh, it wasn't differential transmission, you need a brand new car and there was something wrong with the manual transmission. Mm. And I actually wrote to Mazda on his behalf and then they finally replaced it. Mm. But then he loved the car after that. Yeah. I mean, the, the GV70 is, is great. I mean, what a vehicle. And, it, and like you said, it sounds like you're enjoying it. But one of the biggest complaints about Genesis is that they do not have dealerships around mm -hmm. and that it is, you know, a long drive to get there. And so that's what I always say to people when they're looking at a Genesis, keep that in mind. And it's not just that brand, it's any brand that you don't have a dealership nearby. So if something goes wrong, you know, you have to be prepared for those long distances. Now, speaking of the RAV4 mm -hmm. and the CRV, um, the RAV4 hybrid is very reliable. The CRV, it's a new vehicle. Um, obviously, Honda has a good track record, so I would probably feel okay with buying a CRV hybrid, but the RAV4. It's That's a good one. The only problem is you're going to be able to get a RAV4. And we're hearing yeah. stories of long, long wait times. CRV hybrids you're probably going to be able to, to get. But don't give up on the Genesis. I mm -hmm. think you might still have something there. Oh, Andrea, I just wanted to mention something. Yeah. We have a tire giveaway that we're we doing do. with Toyo Tires. Mm -hmm. And if you watch some of our other videos, we mention it. So it's running only for a month. Mm -hmm. So we're putting the link below. And you have a chance to win a set of Toyo Celsius 2 all-weather tires. Mm -hmm. We're giving away a set for Canada. And who else gets a set, Andrea? And for the U.S. And it's perfect timing. We're heading into those winter months. Um, we've got the all-weather um, Celsius 2 tires on our Honda Civic. And they've been great so far. So we are prepared for any snow that might come our way or ice. Quickly, before we move on, mm -hmm. all-weather tires are not all-season tires. No. They have more traction for inclement weather. So these Celsius 2 are designed for more snow capability. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go through that when we do uh, each of our videos. But there you go. I encourage you to enter. The link is below. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't like free? Mm -hmm. There was actually a great question on this. So um, we announced it first in our Lexus TX review. If you haven't watched that yet, watch it. It's a good one from Texas. Someone was asking, I guess, with if you put um, winter tires on your vehicle that you get a break with your insurance. Um, is that the same with all weather? 
Well, or is it different? Okay, so the main thing is on the side of the tire, there's a, a, a mountain snowflake symbol, mm -hmm. which means it's capable to drive on areas where they say you, uh, snow tires are required, mm -hmm. or winter tires, I should say, are required, like rural British Columbia, Quebec, places like that. Yeah. So I would think, I don't know for sure, if it has that mountain snowflake mm -hmm. symbol, it is rated for winter driving, and you should get a discount. Mm -hmm. And that's De why they invented this category. Yeah. Leave them on all year. You don't have to change tires. Yeah, kind of nice, right, that you don't have to go in and fight especially if you get snow early then everyone rushes if you're not taking uh, the tires off yourself best crossover hybrid suv oh, i know what crossover zach's gonna hybrid say SUV. Okay. there's so many options i don't know where to start honda crv toyota rav4 kia hyundai mazda i've had a toyota prius for 13 years so reliable and it's and oh it says here for 13 years so reliability is very important to well me. this is easy andrea mm -hmm. you know i'm what i'm gonna say is i know the the best car on the road is the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. And I'll run through the reasons why, Andrea. I love going through this. What's the most popular category of vehicle? Mm -hmm. Compact SUVs. Ticks that box. Yep. Um, what's Toyota known for? Reliability? Mm -hmm. Durability? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it ticks those two boxes. Fuel economy. Fuel economy's killer. Resale value is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And... It has an incredibly low starting price. Mm -hmm. um, is it thirty six thousand? I believe. Or I think 30, it's gone up. I think um, thirty eight. Yeah, 38 in now. Canada, it's a yeah. little bit more. But what I like about the Rav Four Hybrid is that all the trims that Toyota offers. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lower starting point, but if you want all the bells and whistles. Um, you'll pay more for those, but there is a trim for everybody and everybody's budget, and that's why we like it a lot. Now, I have to say that Kia and Hyundai are producing wonderful hybrids. You'll find that the Sportage and the Tucson hybrid are quieter than the RAV4, um, but as we all know, Hyundai and Kia have had some issues with their past vehicles. The current models are much more reliable. Okay. I just want to um, say, I just want to say, okay, you've got all the poker chips, or mm -hmm. you've got all the, all the casino chips, and you're you're at Vegas and they've got your options there. Mm -hmm. Hyundai, Kia, Toyota, Honda. And you're going to have to go all in with all your chips mm -hmm. on the one you think will have the least amount of trouble in 13 years. Mm -hmm. Where are you going with? RAV4 Hybrid. You're going over to Toyota. Yeah, and the fact that you have a Prius already, you've been happy with it, it's been reliable. I think that you will be really happy with a RAV4 Hybrid. It's a terrific vehicle. If and you you'll find one that fits one, your budget. If you can yeah, find one. That's the problem. Why is there such a large gap of time between when Toyota Lexus reveals a vehicle to when they have the media drive and announce pricing. For instance, the 2024 Tacoma was re revealed in May and um, that was in Hawaii, yeah. right? This, is, this, is, this isn't And that there still bad. isn't a media drive yet. So Tacoma is coming in November, I think they're going to do a media drive. This is nothing compared to what you get in, in, for the Germans. Often, German cars are released Ooh, a full yeah. model year before they come to North America. Mm -hmm. I think of Volkswagen for many, many years, they would bring out like a new Golf or yep. whatever it was. It would be out for a full model year in mm -hmm. Europe before it ever came to North America. So that's not too bad. So it's usually under a year from when they show the vehicle mm -hmm. to drive the vehicle to the vehicles on sale. And also keep in mind, we did the TX GX unveiling. I feel like it was June or mm -hmm. was it, or no, was, it was it June. summer? It August. Ju it, end of June, beginning of July, right around there. Yes, that's right. Land Cruiser was August. Okay, so we are going, we just drove the TX. Mm -hmm. and that's it three is, months later. Yeah, yeah, so that's not bad. But you're right, there are some that are longer. It could also be about getting the vehicles, right? That they don't have enough for the drive event. And I think it's also got to do with what factory is producing it for worldwide production. Yeah. If it's a vehicle just for North America, I don't know uh, the plans off the top of my head for where TX is going to be sold, but the biggest market will be North America, I would mm -hmm. think, for that one. Well, TX, yes, it's only produced in North America. No, it's produced, but also the biggest market. So you have to also see if there's only one right. factory making this car, it has to be shipped all over the world, mm -hmm. where a, a factory is making a car for just one region, yes. you're going to have more availability. That's true. Love the channel. Have you heard anything about the Honda Civic Hybrid? They announced it back in January, and mum's the word. The rumors are 2024 model year. Well, but yeah. nothing's been confirmed from Honda. That's the thing. It's been, oh, I'm trying to think now. It's been two years. 
since the Civic was first introduced, mm -hmm. right? So you would think that would be a great way to ignite some excitement around their car. Yeah. And a nice mid-cycle refresh come mm -hmm. out with that. So it's probably, I would say it's next year as a 25 model, which makes sense to me because if it was going to be a 24 model, we'd already know about it. You would think. You yeah. would think. Yeah. Um, the other thing is the Honda Accord Hybrid is fantastic. So I am so excited about the Civic Hybrid coming. Oh, I just want to say, it's already for sale in Europe. They don't mm -hmm. actually sell a regular gas model in Europe. It's only sold as a hybrid. So if you're in Europe and you're watching, mm -hmm. right below, and what do you think about your Honda Civic Hybrid? Are you enjoying it? Mm -hmm. And what sort of fuel economy are you yeah. getting on it? Do you think the once loved Volkswagen quality has unfortunately disappeared to try to compete with all of the competitors? My Volkswagens I've owned in the last 19 1990s is definitely not the Volkswagen I own today. Do you think this will only get worse? Gosh, I hope not because we ordered a GTI. I think so that I the really cars in the not. 90s and the early 2000s were absolute hot trash. I think they're better now. I, I would disagree with that. Mm. I don't know if you're going early 90s. Zach owned a GTI yeah, in the I 90s. Own, I, owned a, I owned a GTI in the early 90s. It wasn't very good. A lot Did of the, it have a lot of problems? I can't yes. remember. Yes, it did. So were you always in the shop? Well, no, it was just it was just uh, glitchy, so it had to go. Um, the other thing is that I think <laughs> that to talking to the Volkswagen people, they basically say it's all about um, how much they spend on warranty costs, right? Mm. So that's their barometer. If the warranty costs are going down, they think they're doing a good job, right? I don't know. I think people who are taking their vehicle back to the dealership all the time are frustrated. Mm -hmm. Look at JD Power gives it a below average reliability score. Their vehicles kind of range between 72 to 75 out of 100. I mean, it's not the best, but I know that people who love Volkswagen vehicles will take a chance because it's a German vehicle and they feel like it has that German driving are you, experience. Are you one of those right? people, Andrea? I do like German vehicles, but I have to say, I I never owned a Volkswagen. This is going to be my first Volkswagen, this GTI. Um, and you inherited one. Really, we're getting it. You were we married, we had a Volkswagen. We had a van, yeah. Volkswagen It was van. pretty good. The Volkswagen van was good. It didn't have any issues. Look at we're just crossing our fingers. There's another auto journalist that we were just on this uh, trip to Texas, and he ordered a Golf R. And he's having nothing but trouble with it. But what so, he said was, I knew this when I bought it, but I still love it. And he's he willing, loves that. He's willing to put up with it. Just like I'll be willing to, if I have to go to the dealer to take it in for something, that's fine. So it was kind of cute because Toyota says, well, we could sell you a GR Corolla. And that's reliable. And he said... But do you know what he said? Yeah. He said, I wanted the Golf R because I get the fun driving experience, but it's comfortable. He says, I'm not young anymore. I'm not young. He I says, don't I want gotta, it beating me up. I want to I want to be comfortable. Yeah. There you go. Thinking about an SUV upgrade and wondered about your thoughts about the Ineos Grenadier, or shall I wait for the new Toyota Land Cruiser coming to North America? And of course, love your show. Is that the one that's like the Land Rover, a G Wagon kind of thing? Yeah, it looks like a G Wagon. Yeah. It looks super cool. I've been, I gotta I've been, say. I've been hearing stories about this brand for years. I've, I mean, I've seen them at auto shows, but I don't really know much more about them than okay, that. Okay, so I did a little research on it because I didn't know a lot about it either. Just, um, by pictures, you know, seeing the pictures and it looks good. So Ineos Automotive produces this vehicle and in front, France. Right? Oh, yeah. Oui, oui, yeah. So it's coming to North America as a 2024 model. It's supposed to arrive in the U.S. sometime in November and in Canada in January. It's going to have a starting price of almost 92,000 Canadian. <coughs> um, Excuse uh, me, I'm just... I know. On the price. Yeah, keep going. I read that it's backed by a five year, 100,000 kilometer warranty. They also have a warranty on the paint as well. Like they're really kind of throwing in some extra perks. It's supposed to be a five seater SUV. It'll be powered by a BMW source turbocharged three liter inline six. It uses an eight speed ZF automatic transmission and a permanent four wheel drive system and a two speed transfer case. They have a diesel in Europe. The, the, the horsepower Europe. numbers were not that great. For I, such a I big don't vehicle. know if it's correct though. 282 horsepower and 332 pound feet of torque. Yeah. If anybody knows anything yeah, about that. Yeah, but you think that. about a G Wagon AMG. I, I mean, know. that thing is just loaded with power, but it's also more than twice the price. Listen, I, I just don't know 
know with all of these boutique brands, they like the boutique electric brands, I kind of get it because yeah. it's a whole new frontier. Mm -hmm. But if it was my money, I would be getting the... I, would be I getting get a Land Cruiser. I get the Toyota and... I mean, and then, I, I, I and wait and see. Yeah, I mean, the Land Cruiser is new as well, but it's a Toyota. So I have a lot of confidence, obviously, in the brand because they market the brand as being reliable. So they're going to take care of you. This is brand new. I mean, I like the little extras that they're throwing at people, but I don't know. I wouldn't or, take a or, chance on it. The other one is just go and buy a really nice used G-Wagon. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's loads of them out there because they sold them for many years and they what all about, kind, of, I would, kind of look the same well i can tell you the land cruiser isn't starting at ninety two thousand. no no it's going to be way cheaper than it's that it's going to be less yeah they did announce the american yeah, was, starting uh, was price mid 50s it? i think they said yeah. or mid 60s like, yeah 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 it was like fifty eight thousand us something like that so i think you're only a be million okay. canadian it'll only yeah, be a million a canadian. million question from my father-in-law he's getting a new car in the next week and wants your opinion on engine break-in hmm. anything that he should or shouldn't do uh when first getting the new car i'm gonna open the least read book well, they the say world. you don't no, want to no. push it. I don't, I'm not going to get the least read okay. book in the world. This is, this is, this is it's never been opened. When you I've sell the car, at it. when the car is 30 years old, you'll yep. open this and you go, this is still brand new. This, my friends, is the owner's manual. And what I suggest, I'm just being, I'm not, I'm not trying to be cheeky with you. I'm just, it's just a joke about how, now this is, everybody should take time. Oh, take a look at it. And, is that what look, you're thinking? Look at, look at your owner's manual because it should have a break-in schedule in the owner's manual. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, then ask the service advisor at the dealer. Do not change the oil early. I found this out from our uh, master mechanic From your friend. GTI that you had, your Golf that you had that had no, problems? <laughs> no, not from that one. From John Johnny Broak. Yeah. He's the one who told me. He found this. He's a master Porsche technician, mm -hmm. and he didn't know this. Mm -hmm. And he found out that when they put in the first batch of oil, mm -hmm. they put special additives in the oil mm -hmm. to help seat the pistons. As the pistons go up and down inside the cylinder, they have to seat properly. So there's a very, very small amount of abrasion additive that's put in there mm. to let that happen. You don't want to take that out early. So what you want to do is make sure you run that first batch of oil to its first interval. That's mm. very important. But then how much horsepower and revs you've got to add, well, like, look in the book. Yeah, look in the book. Here's just a, a breakdown from um, other manufacturers. Avoid running the vehicle at a high RPM for the first 2,100 kilometers, 1,300 miles. Experts recommend a maximum 4,600 RPM and 161 kilometers per hour or 100 miles per hour. The other one is uh, many times you hear, uh, don't run at a constant speed. You want to have varied mm. speeds. So if you have to drive on the highway, you could put it in a different gear, have the revs a little higher, then change it, have the revs a little lower, vary your speed. So those are the sorts of things that... We're going to have to worry about our manual. GTA. We're gonna have to worry about the R, you know, the revs. We're gonna have to. We got a lot to worry about. Yeah, I remember when we got our Audi last time. Um, I can't remember it was, what they said. It was 3,000 kilometers. It took forever because we oh, don't drive man. that much. I remember that. Oh, yeah, that is. All right, we're Look. running long here again, Andrew. Oh. You know, I'm, I'm the keeper of the clock. I didn't okay. bring a, I didn't bring a, chron, a chron, chronom, chronograph this time. No, thank Jeez. goodness. Love the show because I, I think it was a fake anyway. It wasn't fake. It wasn't a fake watch. It was just like you not were faking fake the watch. time because I don't you think you knew how to do Omega? it. Fake Omega? Come on, no, Andrea. No, not the fake watch. Love the show. How is the reliability of Infinity? Looking to get a seven-seater SUV, QX60 or MDX. Interestingly enough, what? The MDX has slightly better reliability. 78 out of 100 from JD Power. The Infiniti QX60, 72 out of 100. So take the QX60 out of the equation. Everything mm -hmm. else that they sell is ancient. And if you make something long enough, you kind of get good at it. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Infiniti is their cars have been sort of rotting on the vine for many, many yeah. years. I think even over a decade for the G50. What a shame. And so what a waste of a, of a brand. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to Andrea's point. I like both of them. Me I too. think the MDX is more car-like and I think the QX60 is more SUV-like. Yeah, I think so too. So it depends what you like. Both are very good vehicles. 
Um, haven't heard a lot of complaints about reliability with the QX60. I have heard with the MDX. I'm only assuming because they probably sell more MDXs mm -hmm. than QX60. Oh, no, but there's Andrea, some. Andrea, um, I can guarantee you they sell <laughs> way more. Accurate as the MDX is. Um, they some electrical issues with the MDX, and then of course that um, trackpad being glitchy, and some issues with the infotainment. That's all I've heard. Other than that, it's great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Actually, I like the MDX a lot. Mm. All right, so uh, that's a wrap. We're that's doing wrap. this twice a week now. Don't forget to click the link below to the Toyo Tires thing when you get a moment. Yeah. It's only open for a few weeks. And how do you play along if you want to get a question Follow in? along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday, I put a post out 7 a.m. Pacific time. Only stays up for a short time. Once we gather our questions, we start the show. Thanks so much for watching. See you then. See you next time.